What is up everyone and welcome to another freshly squeezed game review. That is totally the name we're sticking with and today I will be discussing my thoughts on the best and worst parts of a new Pokemon Snap. Although it's mostly positive things I have to say about this highly anticipated sequel, I do have some gripes with the upgraded Pokemon photography experience, so let's break it down and if you guys are excited, make sure to hit that like button, show your support for the game review return, and let's get to it. So let's get started with the good, and immediately I have to express how impressed I am with the visual presentation. The lentil region looks absolutely stunning throughout its various landscapes and biomes. The Pokemon are beautifully rendered and animated and for the first time in a long time feel like they're actually alive and thriving in these environments. Bandai Namco previously developed Pokken Tournament and they deliver here once again with the graphics cause this might honestly be the best looking Pokemon game ever. I love how much detail was put into every corner of every area, and every time I run through a level again, it feels like I discovered new things I didn't notice before. Though it would have been nice to explore the levels freely to truly appreciate the detail, I also don't mind the on-rail, safari-like experience of the game, as that is of course how the original Pokemon Snap was, and it just makes the whole game feel like a super fun Pokemon theme park ride. It doesn't exist yet, but trust me. One day. I mean, Nintendo World is already a thing, so it's just a matter of time before they make it a reality. The Fireflow Volcano was by far my favorite area, maybe because I love Fire-type Pokemon, but also because the graphics really get to shine here. From the moment you enter the crater, hordes of colorful creatures run by, contrasting with the dark, flaming rocks. And inside the blazing mountain, lava gushes around as you try to focus on getting that perfect shot. There is this one room in particular where the blue fire contrasting with the red Pokemon makes them really pop out and Monferno's jumping around the whole level, so it's really no surprise this is my favorite. One of my main concerns for the Snap sequel was the amount of content we would get compared to the original which only had one island with seven areas to explore. And I'm happy to report that there's plenty of content here with 12 locations to explore and over 20 variations if you count the day and night versions separately, plus the Illumina spots where the giant glowing Pokemon appear. I really love how at first the game makes you think it's just Florio Island we'll be exploring. At least if you've played the first game, you would think it's just the one island, but then more and more keep unlocking as you play. And I was especially shocked when the final Ice Island appeared out of nowhere since we never saw that in the trailers. It might not make any sense geographically having an ice and a volcano right next to each other, but it makes for a damn fun photography game. In total, we get about 8 to 10 hours of playtime just to complete the main story, which well over doubles the length of the original game. Not to mention the replayability new Pokemon Snap offers with over 200 Pokemon from every generation to find, and each of them having 4 different behaviors you can register in the photo decks. It can start to feel repetitive once you've gone through the same zone over and over, but the different research levels you unlock help spice things up. With each level up, the Pokemon start warming up to you and behave differently, plus new ones appear to break the monotony. I personally haven't gotten bored of it yet, but I can see some people getting over it quickly, so if you're a completionist that doesn't mind the grind, then there's definitely a lot to keep you busy in this game, and make that $60 price tag worth it. A new discovery. I still don't know how I feel about this one, but there's rare Pokemon hidden in every level, and the only clues the game offers are research tasks that vaguely hint their locations and methods for appearing. This could actually be seen as one of the worst parts of the game as I've spent hours throwing apples and orbs, playing music, and spamming the scan button just to try and figure out how to get whatever's at the bottom of that whirlpool. And I'm not sure I would have ever figured it out if it wasn't for the internet. Same goes for legendary Pokemon, some of which are pretty easy to come across while others require genius level intellect to detect, or a quick YouTube search. 
I know a lot of people complain about difficulty in Pokemon games, and even though this is a spin-off, it probably offers one of the most challenging experiences in the franchise. And I'm not just saying that because I suck at taking photos, but because figuring out these research tasks without the internet can be really tricky. Let me know how you feel about it. Should they have made the research tasks a little bit easier to figure out, or are you happy that there's actually something challenging in the game? It certainly does get more people talking about the game. Speaking of rare Pokemon, there is one thing missing from this game that got me pretty disappointed. And that is, of course, shiny Pokemon. Shiny hunting has become one of the most popular aspects of the Pokemon community, and I'm not asking for a specific method of finding them in this game, but it would have been cool if there was a tiny chance of encountering a shiny in the wild. This could be like the ultimate rare photo that doesn't count for extra points in game, but would definitely be worth some clout points in real life, or on the internet. Nintendo games and online don't usually tend to go well together, but I think New Pokemon Snap did it pretty well, with the option to edit and upload photos to Pokegram, which isn't actually what it's called, but you know, it's like the official page in-game where you can check out other players' photos, and I'll admit it's not the best place for finding cool shots, I think Twitter is better at that, but I do have a lot of fun editing and coming up with stupid captions regardless. Now I've covered most of the things I loved about the game, so it's time for what you've really been waiting for. The worst of new Pokemon Snap. First, what is up with these characters? Professor Mirror? More like Professor Loser, am I right? Uh, seriously, this has got to be the most forgettable Pokemon professor since... Elm? I get it's a lot to live up to Professor Oak from the original Pokemon Snap. Like, who can forget that nostalgic Welcome back! And I was happy to see them reference some of those classic lines in the new one, but you can't just bait me with nostalgia, Professor Mirror. There ain't nothing special about you. For a professor all about photography, I feel they could have made him much more quirky and his design more unique. I mean, his hairstyle is a straight up ripoff of Professor Birch from Hoenn. They could have made his robes more colorful or torn up from being out in the field, his glasses oddly shaped, or anything honestly. This dude is so boring. Also, I haven't seen him take one damn picture all game long, but he sure is quick to roast yours. Like, could I see your photography degree at least? What do you mean this is only a gold star? Can't you see how cute this whooper is? My apologies, that got a little personal. But, uh, besides the professor, I feel the other characters are just as bland. Like, can you tell me one thing about Rita's personality? And no, her hair and eyes looking like Gudra doesn't count, even if that is literally her only defining trait. Even Todd Snap, the legend himself from the first game, doesn't really get a chance to shine here. I guess it's cool that he's training totally not Gon, and that's sort of your rival, but... Nothing ever happens with that in the story. I thought the rival would actually be a lot more annoying, but I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing either. Listen, I love Todd Snap, but if it wasn't for the nostalgia, I feel there's really nothing special about him coming back for this game. You know what else ain't that special? The music, man! What happened? The one department in which Pokemon games continue to kill it generation after generation is where Bandai Namco most drops the ball in my opinion. Just think back to the music from the original Pokemon Snap. That jingle instantly comes to mind. Dun 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 Now I just finished playing new Pokemon Snap and I can't remember a single track from it. Aside from maybe the feeling of epicness during the Illumina Pokemon segments. It is quite a cozy game, so I get they were going for a more atmospheric soundtrack that doesn't overtake the sounds of nature and the Pokemon themselves, which, by the way, I forgot to mention earlier, but every Pokemon has brand new, more realistic sounding cries. And I love it. So many times I found myself perplexed by the complex sounds I was hearing, but once you recognize the Pokemon it's coming from, it makes perfect sense. From the bellows of Hippowdon to the chirps of Picky Peck, and whatever the heck sound Quagsire makes, I was thoroughly impressed with the sound design. Just not the music though. That was butt cheeks. And that is it, the best and worst parts of Pokemon Snap, according to this guy. 
What did you think of the game though? Let me know in the comments below. Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? I'm gonna probably give it an 8 out of 10. I mean, it did everything that I wanted it to, you know, as a Pokemon Snap sequel. It was the original game, but better. Except you couldn't knock Charmander into the lava and evolve him into Charizard, so I give it minus one point for that, and minus another... Sorry. Minus one points for the not very good music, or at least not memorable. I don't know, maybe an eight is a little too nice, actually. Uh, seven and a half. I'm not good at reviews, man.